Hey guys, this is Anthony from anthonymorganti.com and this is part four of our Learn Lightroom 5 series. In part one, um, we processed this photograph in the develop module of Lightroom 5 and I showed you these um, controls where you could process the photograph. In part two, I went over the tools and we continued processing the same photograph. In part three, um, we processed this photograph from beginning to end. Um, we, um, this is the before picture, this is the after picture, and I showed you my, sh my whole workflow on how I processed that photograph. Um, in this um, episode, we're going to be processing a photo into black and white, and I chose this um, photograph of the lighthouse. And um, I'm going to show you my entire workflow on how I uh, would process this photograph. Um, first things uh, I would do, um, the horizon's a little crooked, and as you can see, it's a little bit, got a little bit of a curve in it from my lens. So I go to lens corrections right away, and um, enable uh, profile corrections, uh, remove chromatic aberration, and then I'll hit auto, and auto should straighten it, and yeah, it did, and it um, made the verticals vertical and the horizontals horizontal. So. Um, that's fine, we're done with that panel. Next thing I do, I go right into the basic panel and um, I do what I do to every photograph. I go right to highlights and I turn it all the way down. And I go to the shadows and I turn those all the way up. Um, next, if I wanted, I would put a graduated filter in here, which is this control right here. But I'm not going to do it in this photograph because the lighthouse is here and I don't want the graduated filter to affect the lighthouse. So I'm going to deal with the sky in a different way a little later. Um, so we'll jump right, I, I set my white and my black point. And the way you do that is you hold the Alt key in when you're on the white. And when you touch the white, you know, click down on it, it um, the whole screen turns black. Uh, move it to the right until you just get some... Um, something showing you know the whites oranges but I usually whites I usually just let it barely come through and um, even then I just kind of readjusted it there we go uh, now the blacks uh, is the similar thing you hold the alt key down when you click on the black uh, slider the whole screen turns white this time move it to the left until you get some blacks and I usually bring this one a little further and that's that. Now we set the white and black point. Now the next thing I would do is um, exposure and contrast and I do think the picture's a, a tad bright so I'm gonna bring exposure down just a little bit, probably less than a third of a stop. And I'm gonna bring contrast and now we're gonna be we're processing this in black and white eventually so I, I want it uh, contrasty. I want this picture to be like a real stormy sky and, and you know something out of a, a book so I'm going to bring contrast up fairly high, around 38. I'm going to bring clarity up um, fairly high too, because uh, that will add to the effect once it's in black and white. Uh, vibrance and saturation, I don't have to do anything in because we're going to send this to black and white. Um, now how we're going to do that is we go to this panel right here. It's the HSL color and black and white panel, and we simply just click on the black and white, and it turns the photograph into black and white. Now, you'll see these colors here, and what you're actually doing when you slide these is, um, if you're, for instance, it's easier if I show you. We know there's blue in the sky. Um, if I take the blue and I make it darker, you can see how it's making the sky darker. And I, that's what I want. I want the sky a little more dramatic, so I'm going to bring the blue slider pretty far down. I don't want anything to be absolute black in the sky, though, so right about there is good. Now the other ones in this, you know, if you had uh, something you knew, you had a red flower or, or something, you know you when you adjusted red it would do something, but in this photograph it's not as clear cut outside of the blue. So we'll just, you know, try them out. Uh, move red to the right, move red to the left. The only thing I, thing I really see it affecting is this um, sign here. And um, so I'm not going to mess with it, so double click on it and it puts it right back where it was. Um, orange, move to the right, and I see it's uh, brightening up this area here, and I kind of like that. See? So, 
we're going to brighten that up by moving the orange slider to the right. Yellow is probably going to do that same area, I would imagine, because usually yellows and oranges are together. And it is, so I'm going to bring that up a little bit. Green, I'm not sure there's much green in here. Move it around. I see a little bit happening in the water in the foreground and on the face of the lighthouse. Um, so I'll bring it up a little, brighten those up a little bit. Aqua should probably affect a little bit more like we did um, with the blue. And it does. So I'll bring that up a tiny bit. Purple similarly, although maybe not. Yeah, not really much going on there, and I'll leave that alone. And I doubt magenta is going to do anything. No, and it doesn't. Okay, so now we adjusted the black and white mix by adjusting these color sliders. So I'm done with that panel. Um, I do even want a little more drama in the sky. So I'm going to go to the tone curve, and I'm just going to pull down on the tone curve a little bit and bring the whole picture a little darker even. Okay, now it's starting to shape up to more of what I want it to be. Um, this part in here, the base of the lighthouse, is, is um, pretty dark. So I'm going to uh, use the brush tool. And I'm going to set it to exposure. And you can see I have a previous setting on there. And I'm just to reset it, hold the Alt key down. You'll see how this effect turns into reset. Click on it, and everything zeroed out. Now, I'm going to bring up the exposure, maybe a stop. See what that looks like. And I want I want auto masking on so that it doesn't bleed as readily into other things. And I want the brush to be feathered um, because I want I don't want it to look like a white line. I want it to look more uh, blurred at the edges. Now, you use the left bracket key to make it smaller and the right bracket key to make it bigger. So we're going to make it a little smaller and we're just going to paint on here. And maybe up in here a little bit. No, I didn't like that. So now I hold the Alt key down and you can see how this plus turns into a minus and that means we're going to be erasing what we just did. And that's good. I think I like it like that. Maybe a little bit more in there. That's good. Okay, so we're done with that. You could just hit it again and it will close. Or down here it has close. If you messed it all up, you could hit reset. But this, I could turn it on and off to see the effect. There it is off. There it is on. And I kind of like it, so I'm going to leave it. All right, now uh, the next thing uh, we could do is the detail panel. This is where we sharpen it and get rid of any noise. And inherent when you do black and white is you get a lot of uh, luminance noise in the photograph. And um, yeah, as I look at it now, I don't really see too much. But I'm going to bring sharpening up. Um, we're going to, the part five of this series, I'll be going over this panel. Uh, to show you how to um, set it exactly for sharpening and noise reduction. Um, if you don't really, you know, want to worry about all the technical details about it, um, I mentioned before, set sharpening around 70 and don't even mess with these three sliders. And set your luminance to around 40 for the noise reduction. That gives it a nice... Um, a nice mix. All right, now, um, all right, we sharpened it. We got some noise reduction. It's still not really where I want, so I'm going to go back into the basic panel, and I'm going to I'm going to boost contrast even more, and I'm going to boost clarity a little more. All right, now it's getting closer. Um, now the water. Um, in my opinion, is a little too clear, a little too um, sharp. So I'm going to blur that. Now how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a, a brush, we're going to click New, I'm going to reset it by holding the Alt key in and hitting that reset. Then I'm going to 
I'm going to take clarity. I'm going to turn it all the way down. And I'm going to take sharpness, and I'm going to turn that a little down. And I'm going to get a fairly big brush, and I'm going to brush on the water. And you can see it's blurring it out and taking some of the highlight away from it, which I really didn't care for. Get in here a little bit. Now, um, that's pretty good. I like that. Maybe in here a little more. If you um, hover over the um, button of what you just painted, it'll um, come up with a mask over the water, where, or in this case the water, where I painted, and I could see that I missed a couple spots. So I could come back and paint over here. I could paint over here. Okay, that's done. Close that up. Now, um, the only other thing is uh, the lighthouse looks kind of drab. Um, so actually, I think I'm going to add some little light on the lighthouse. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to do another brush. I'm going to reset it. I'm going to click this drop down and put exposure. I'm just going to bring the exposure up maybe less than half a stop and see what happens here when I do it. Yeah, I kind of like that. See kind of a, you know, the lighthouse isn't perfectly uniform in color. It's it's stained. And um, I'm going to brighten up some areas of it, make it a little more interesting. And there, I like that. Now, um, the other um, thing, now I added contrast and some clarity after I uh, went into the detail slider and did the noise reduction. And I just want to double check the sky, um, bring it to one to one, and look at it to make sure that I don't have any noise introduced. And I do see I did introduce a little more noise. Um, the way um, I think I'll get rid of that is I'll just brush it out again. Um, and what we'll do is we, um, excuse me, we bring out the uh, brush again. We're going to do a new one. We're going to hit reset again. And this time I'm going to bring the clarity down a little bit. No, actually, I think I'll leave clarity alone because I want the uh, really distinct. Uh, layers of the clouds to show through. But I w am going to turn sharpness down and noise down. And um, get a really big brush. And we're just going to paint now on this. And you almost can't see anything. Um, but when I, probably in the video, um, you really can't see it at all. Um, but it's taking away some of that um, pixelated noise, that grainy looking noise that was in there. And um, making it um, a little more noise free but it's not affecting the detail, which is um, what I was hoping for. Let's see. It's taken a second for my computer to render. And over there, it looks like I missed. OK, that's, that's done as far as I'm concerned. And as I zoom in, um, I could see that that um, grain noise is totally gone now. So um, I like that. 
Now the um, pretty much the picture uh, is finished as far as I'm concerned. I do as I usually do. I like to add a, a vignette. I go to the um, effects and the very first slider, the amount, if you go to the right you'll get a white vignette. If you go to the left you get a dark vignette. And I'd like something about there. And um, that's it. That's um, I process this picture um, from a color, you know, raw file into this. And if I hit the Y key on my keyboard, I'll get the before picture and the after my processing. And um, you know, it's to your own taste. I wanted it. I wanted the sky real dramatic, is <clears throat> you know, to look like a, a storm is rolling in. And as you could see, it was pretty, pretty pleasant day actually. But I totally changed the uh, flavor of the photograph by doing that. Um, so that's it. Um, that's how you process a photograph in Lightroom 5 uh, into a black and white. And um, hit the Y key again and we'll come back to this. So in um, part 5 of this series, as I mentioned earlier, I'll, I'm just going to um, deal with this detail panel and show you um, what all these um, functions do and how you could adapt it to a photograph to uh, get the optimum sharpening, sharpening and noise reduction. And until then, uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate and I appreciate everyone's support. And stop over to anthonymorganti.com. I got some articles over there and more videos, um, you know, to help uh, help you with your photography. Thanks again.